Hello everyone, I am Chester44, also known as Fly, and welcome to this Let's Play of Wildermyth. Last episode we went through clearing out the Tower of Loss, and we're ready for the final fight. We, ta we have to prepare for Ekthys and deal with her. It's the finale of this campaign, so time for us to go. This is the final fight, let's begin. I'll let them know. And over the fields, as these contests played out, pennants would snap and ripple. Blue, gold, silver, and green. It's still my favorite dream, and some of the only memories I have of my parents. How joyful their faces looked to see their joyful boy. That's six. Hey, folks. Triss and me, we've got the approach and everything. Defenses, possible angles. Finished mostly with our equipment. And the dawn shall pounce upon us, its unsettled glare to burn fallen blood like ink into these random rocks. In such script shall our history be spelled. Possible to delay? No, dear birds. That she has not already wrought her absolute will, perhaps we can claim the credit. Better we do not risk losing her attention. Better we finish now what we know we must. But I hope you will excuse me a moment. These wings like to feel the clear old moonlight. Breathe the mountain night. Twenty-nine heartwoods, twenty-two hides, twenty-six ingots, twenty-two fabrics, eighteen spell threads. Alright, is there anything that needs upgrading? Armor-wise, no. Weapon-wise, yes. You can upgrade Ember, can upgrade Ice Spike. Currently, it's that, but let's bring it up to this. That'll make it. Hmm. Ice Spear. Just make it simple Ice Spear. There we go. And as for you. You can upgrade your Vigil Keeper to Tier 3. As for the rest of these upgrades... Hey, you've got the warding. You've got the Ice Shield, which is very fitting. Everyone else is basically as upgraded as they need to be, so we don't need to do any more upgrades. I mean, yes, you do have these swords, but you're not going to be using them. You use the spear, you use the bow. Let us begin. Oh, there we go. By the pre-dawn hour, the Mothman has holed himself in the, inside the tower. Thread by thread, he dismantles the wards that have let them escape notice across flights, fights, and campsites. Ekthus will catch any small glimmer of his presence, he thinks. Too obvious, and they might alert her something's amiss. Rixel are close, aren't they? They're here. Already? I don't see a single... They're patient, taking stock. We look half prepared to fight, which the Mothman said is a good enough ruse. Um... Is that a ruse? Elsie, the battle is only meant to draw her in. Winning really just means surviving for now. Yeah, I know our target. Just... I'm not sure we're any more than half ready. Her heralds will come before her, but if these companions can protect the Mothman long enough, the Queen herself may be called to the field. Alright then. So, let's see. Survive five turns, Mothman must survive. Got three unresting ones, they're a problem. Two Scoriers, six Dweavers, four Thrusts, and two Seekers. Alright. So we need to make sure that they don't come in through there. If we can lure them all into here, that's fine. Alright, Triss. I'm going to interfuse with this. Good. The others are all going to show up. You're going to fall back to here. Send out a discus. Good. 
Sasha, you're gonna fall back to here. And wait. The rest of you. You're gonna move here. And Guardian. LC, you're gonna move here and Guardian. And you. You're gonna interfuse with these. Fall back a step. Let them come to us. That's the idea. Then again, those things that cause stunning, we need to deal with them. Quickly. Alright, LC, you got rid of one. Good. Alright, Triss. Interesting that you're out of range of the one that I wanted you to do. So head up to here. We'll send out another discus. He'll take out the scorier. And it blocked. Of course it did. Son of a bitch. Okay, you can shoot that scorier. Good, that's some damage. Alright. Interfuse with this barricade. That'll shred that unresting one. Elsie, you're gonna come over to here, finish him off. And you'll be guarding. Alright, Arthur, enter Guardian. Well done. That took care of one. Oh, I forgot Triss could do that. I keep forgetting about that. That was a nice shot. Another block! That scurrier is rough. Okay. Alright, they're all coming in. Oh, she's stunned, isn't she? That's not good. Good on that. Alright, we got more foes coming in. You can deal with this. Well done. You can strike again. Good. I'll take care of another. Elsie. Alright, you will be able to get over into here, take out that unsettled. Of course it blocked! Bloody hell! Oh, we can distance again. Take out that one at least. Alright, you. Now, first, Arthur, you step forward, take out the Seeker. Good. Sasha, you'll be able to reach that unresting one. Those things stun, we need to get rid of them all. Good, okay. Moth is in the back there. What the hell? Anathema. Oh, we need to actually do something to deal with this. Those things just keep coming in. Okay. So, Sasha, fall back, shoot that thing. Okay, Seeker handled. Good. Quinnon interferes with, I guess, this banner. Then strike this. Of course it dodged. <coughs> You can distance again. Of course it blocked. You head here, finish off that. And you are gonna fall back. Like I said, we're gonna fight here, at the gate. A 
let them come to us. And Adrathix is coming in, but we just need to survive this turn. Of course it freaking blocked. There goes that one. You, interfuse. Ooh, you got good range for that wild grasp. That'll work. Killed that one. Alright, Sasha, you can get here and shoot this one. Okay. We're able to hold them back the way we've been going. Alright, wait. We're good. This has been turn five. These Dweavers have good range. Alright. That's five turns. A beat of breath, a moment's lull. A weird shudder racks her bones. And then... Elsie knows. My sister's finally home. I'd like to welcome her. Ekthus, Queen of Light, has appeared. In her sun-rivaling splendor, a soul feels heat. The queen's feet land soft as light, spider-like limbs restlessly dancing to clear her path. Damage Ekthus to force her into the tower. We need to go out to her, don't we? Alright, that's gonna make this a bit more difficult. <coughs> Alright. You are gonna move up to here. That was actually a good choice. Alright, interfuse... ...with this. That'll be a good steel fire. Would if it could actually do anything more than thrusts. All right, Arthur. Zealous leap to here. Seekers dealt with. You head over to here. Attack this thrust. Quinnon, you can take care of this Dweaver. Good. Sasha, you head up to here. We found the graphics. Okay, that's a nightmare. Seeker and a bard, and she is not moving. You go over here. There's Exus. Oh, we found everything. She's tall and resplendent, the light pouring from her, an eminence too deep for a single gaze to fully sound, color too luminous for an earthly spectrum to express. Even her voice seems to glow, chromatic and pulsing. Is that little Elsie? Why did you come here, Elsie girl? Poor Elsie. Couldn't you have borne even a single mote of my gift? One tiny star, one spark is all I would have needed. Oh, and you know, you do look indescribably glorious, and yet still like yourself somehow. My mind takes me back to hearing your stories, and I cherish that again, but... Luna, look, and me. We belong together. We always will. You raised me, and I... Oh, no. Elsie? No, you'll never belong in my world. I experience an existence you can't guess about. That rag you're holding out to me. Yes, you call it love, but it's so lifeless and gray. If only you could see that. I'm sorry. Because I know when all my powers unfurl to bring life to its next plateau, you won't be allowed along. I wish that wasn't so. But now it's time to smear out the stumble-winged moth whose meddling has turned you from me. Deluna, 
No. I can't tell you that, can I? My sister. She's choking. She's choking in the grip of your hands. I may be simpler and less brave than she was, but she showed me that no matter what random evil fate falls over you, you've got to face it with courage. And love. So that's what I'll do. I still love you. Whatever's her in you, I love it so, so much. And as long as I'm breathing and you're standing in front of me, I won't get out of your path. That's fine. We may both stand right here as long as you like. Or at least until the day is done. I require very little of you, Elsie. Just let my servants through. Oh, is that really all? You do seem to want that Mothman bad. Well, no. Your bugs aren't getting near him, and neither are you. How can you hope to form a wall when you're so soft, so dull and shapeless? I'm smoking. And I can't shoot her. Not from here. Alright, and I cannot undo my move. Well, that's not good. Okay, uh, Arthur, head up to here. You can't sell asleep. That's not good. Sasha, you're gonna need to retreat. We can't have you all the way up here. So fall back. Alright, Triss. You move forward a bit. No, that's Quinnin! Okay, fine. Quinnin. It's not gonna be much. But it's something. Well, you damage the nightmare. It has a lot of health now. You can zealously. All right, Elsie, you're gonna zealously forward. Fight that nightmare. A lot of damage. Good. And as for you. Wild grass. You know what? Do it. That is a lot of damage. It's pinned. It's gonna be able to do some attacks. <laughs> Dominated. That's not good. But you're still doing that. Some of us are poisoned. Alright, you. This is a rough move, but go forward and attack her. Alright, you can fire leash to this at least. Sasha, shoot the Drathix. Good. Drathix is handled. You can distance this, so it's at least a little bit of damage. And it blocked. Of course it did. I think we'll be able to handle what's over there. Yes. Try remove dominated. Try to remove the dominated effect from an ally. Chance increases with higher relationship tiers. On the enemy turn, this hero will move up to five tiles and attack an ally with a melee attack. Okay, let's try and remove it. I don't think it... it wasn't removed. Son of a bitch. Oh, I didn't see there was another graphic. That's not good. Necessarily very good. And two of us were dominated. There's some damage. More damage. Okay, you two are able to do some good damage there.
Okay, we need to take care of that immediately. Alright, Sasha. Oh, we got more coming in. Sasha, shoot the Dweaver. Good. Needed to do that. Quinnin. And we need to take care of these. Quite enough. Triss. Head up to here. Good. That's what we needed to do. Now. Interfuse with this barricade. That'll do a good amount of damage. Good. That killed one of them. Now, you two. Need to take care of Exus. That was a lot of damage. Not enough. Your ferocity amounts to nothing. Just the bites of tiny mosquitoes. I feel nothing I don't wish to feel. We've been called all kinds of bird names at this point. Mosquitoes is fine. We won't back down. What hope do you have? To delay me? I suppose it's all you can do with your doomed life. Compulsion. <laughs> Irritated. Oh! She's moving closer. Okay, so she is irritated. We still need to deal with these, but we are getting her to move into the tower. Oh boy. Everything is moving towards the tower. Keep attacking her, she'll go in. Possibly next turn. They're just ignoring us. They're just charging into the tower. Don't care for that dominating. Mothman just has to survive now. All right, Triss. Head to here. There, that damaged that. Splinter Blast will do a good amount of damage to all those. Quinnin. This should work. This just interferes with, thi with uh, this. Step forward. There's more irritating. I see. So we need to keep doing this in order to make her more irritated. It's not enough. <sighs> Damn it. Had I known, I would have attacked her again. Fine. At least you can strike that one. You two are not going to be able to help. Not much. <laughs> Alright, time for their turn, and the Mothman just has to survive this. 
Once that happens, we'll be able to send her in. Survive. Right, the dominating. But you guys will be fine. Okay. Quinnon, head over to here. Interfuse with this. Striker. Almost. We got her! Ha ha! Not ready. Are you really going to give me a fight? A duel, I, we would have called it, when I was young and dumb and rash. That is to say, when I was a little more like you. Words won't harm me, and they certainly won't save your life. No, indeed. Please understand, they only help me take my beatings a little more bravely. I came such a long way, devoted so much time, bent so many Thrixel forms to hunting you. Yes, you did. You are very intrepid. And what do you think now? Now? I think... I think... I'm never getting out of here, am I? I am sorry. An old man can still pay the debts of his careless youth. Fool, if you were able if you're able to show me something new, I welcome it. She's far more powerful. He's far more practiced. In the end, it only matters who's quicker. Deafening color, blinding noise. The hall's interior descends into sensory chaos. Ice, ember, flash, shadow, braided into tethers. They bind and drag this world to its oblivion. Elsie, I think we're meant to leave. Now! But the Mothman... Looks like he's staying. He had to know. They're going to kill him! Look, she's not going to be held! The Mothman's wild throne magic sent he and Ekthus careening in a spiral through time and thought. But in the fraction of an instant she had, Ekthus scrambled to pull her remaining Thrixel round. Now she steadies herself upon them, the way an aerial dancer might balance on the limbs of her flying partners. She begins to take mastery. I can feel her bending me. She could prevent us from closing that door. I don't know what's... All right, hurry. We'll kill these drones and get out. The Thrixel encircle him, bladed legs outstretching. Quinnon and the others rush to form a wall around the Mothman. They'll cast out Ekthus's underlings a final time. Clear the Tower of Thrixel and get out. Oh, okay. This is unexpected. You head here. Okay. That helps. Interfuse with this. We'll get a discus out, which will do quite a bit of damage. There goes a bard, and the other one dodge. Of course it did. Alright. You, head over to here. You're gonna shoot that seeker over there. Alright. Arthur, 
you're going to be able to Zealous Leap to somewhere good. Zealous Leap to here. Take care of that Scorier. Alright, Elsie, you head over to here. Fight the Seeker. Quinnen? You can only head up to here, but you'll be able to finish off this Seeker. Good. Alright, that's half of them dealt with, but we need to take care of the rest. And then get out of here. Good on you, Triss, for being able to do that. Don't like that it knocked you back. Oh, another Dracus. Don't like it, don't like it at all. Alright, Quinnen, head forward. Hey, there goes that. All right, we're good. We just need to get out of here. There we go. All right, Triss, you just run. Sasha, you're going to head outside, shoot that Dracthus. Get rid of it. It needs to die. Good. Here come the others. We still got more trying to buy trying to get in. All right, you head here. Good, that killed that one. And you can stun so you can get out here. Triss, you're going to interfuse with these books. Get out to here. Good move. And lore dump on that one. Not enough to kill it, but it did do damage. Arthur, you head here. Weaver's dealt with. Elise, you head out to here. Anything attacks, we'll be able to handle it. You won't be able to... You can shoot it. From here. Okay, Thrixel's dealt with. We got him! As her Thrixel drop in severed heaps, Exus sinks. Radiance all but drowned. She recedes once more into the murk of the Mothman spell. Drifting. An eerie tranquility floods the hall. The flux of colors is slow and forceful. A lake tide. Both of these immortal beings are like ruins themselves, motionless in prismatic depths. They both lied to us. She's not invincible, and he's no coward. Time to go, Elsie. Yeah. They emerge from the tower, heaving the door shut on the roiling, bitter miracle inside. Triss sets the bar in its brackets. The stones mumble. A faint gloss rolls along their surfaces, and the Tower of Lops seems to firm. Triss? They don't seem to think it's over. The Thrixil crowd quiet, flickering and collecting their legs, wings keeping position in the sky and on the earth. More of them hoard on the edge of the myth and a mist in a ghostly rank. Mom's watching her kids today, Triss. She's proud of us. And if I die so you can make it, well, that's a big sister's right, and her honor. And Luna's out of anyone's reach now. Kill us or not, you bugs can't touch her. Knowing this dawns. Tilts one weird head, then the next. It's the Thrixel equivalent of a sigh. Not audible, but visible in the way their forms relax and expand. Rigidity and purpose fades. And as one, they turn from the tower's face. Back towards their own place, perhaps, they go. Well, mission accomplished. Oh look, <laughs> they're leveled up again. I think he's at max level. Um, sure, why not, Vigilance?
They linger round the tower days and nights, proving to themselves that nothing's coming out. Each finds a moment or two to offer whatever private words make sense to them. The fourth such day, they decide, suddenly and as a group, to go. The sun's already low when they embark. It'll be twenty years before anyone returns to the Tower of Locks. Arthur will guide a team of volunteers into those mountains. Finding the door still barred and intact, he'll lead the monumental task of burying the place. And that's more or less how things finish. We can't recall every turn of every path or page. Step-by-step -step trails meet and split, are traced in moonlight and the songs that follow. Still, as many wonders as we see on the road, home is often what we long for by road's end. While home was never a perfect place, we were never perfect people. We forgot ourselves in smiles and relished every compliment we collected. We gave of ourselves much more than we'd wanted and couldn't hide sometimes the pain of that loss. Some of us were only unlucky enough to fall into a story. Some chose our paths, not knowing where they'd take us, how deep we'd go into wilderness beyond all we'd believed. And some carried on the a in the ashes of love. We claimed what we could from the wreck of childhood, left all but the ghosts behind. Yes, and some survive only in yarns. The tales of how this moon rose are as plentiful as the nights we gather. We'll gather. Tell you them all. Because through tale and time, memories of the old become dreams of the young. Memories and dreams, those lightless gleams that our eyes seek on finding. They take us from tables and summon us home, warmly felt and ever fading. What are you doing? How extraordinary. He's dying. Sometime later. Hmm. Your life's been exhaustingly comfortable. And none of my efforts well earned. You might understand, then, why even a gallant man's conscience weighs heavy. All I understand is you lack, lack proper appreciation. For saving my life, I cannot be sure I should thank you for it. Not that. Anyway, I'll likely kill you myself when I'm sick of you. No, you show no appreciation for the gifts we've been given. Given? I believe the cost of these gifts is what I eventually soured on. We lost our ties to... to everyone. Lost our families, even our own flesh. The Thrixel, poor aimless dreamers, tangled or wrangled us into their world, and it struck first as misfortune. And yet, for our sacrifice we've been able to live equal to any wonder, any goddess or god, king or queen. And, uh, and for such imaginative beings, it was startling for me to discover the Thrixel had no concept for what a nightmare truly was. Until I showed them. Do you understand? Call me a moth in your web, dear Agthis. I am compelled. What are you saying? I speak of our natures. Human and Thrixel, and the dominance of one over the other. Thrixel exists without desire. Their world, where their mind's whims are made manifest, is balanced precisely because they don't wish. A human heart, however, like mine, we are composed entirely of wishing, of wanting. In Terrafract, it makes us all commanding. I suppose I knew as much already. I know you did. That's why that... That's what frustrated me. You'd seen and known all that I got to know. And yet you'd refuse to make anything of it. I didn't wish necessarily to rule the world. But I didn't feel like the world deserved any better. Let someone stop me if they could. And they did. Yes, they did. You did. So why do I find you so disappointingly joyless? So without the smug triumph I would have expected. Ah, well. The thing I did not anticipate was that I would survive, caught flightless and forced to see you flightless. I confess it has me feeling rather doleful. The fact we're trapped in a dusty old tower for eternity? Yes, that. Is it the moon you miss? Maybe. Partly. 
I can give you the moon. It does look and feel so authentic. You expected less from me? I suppose you are the Queen of Light, and I'll remind you who you are, Moth Prince. The two of us can still make anything we'd wish for. That! I liked that story! <laughs> and we got an achievement for having everyone survive to the end. All five main characters. Well, here goes the final bit of information. May as well let it go. Man, this episode went long, but that was a hell of, an, a, hell of a climax. <laughs> I loved it. And I think this is the same outro as every other time. Elsie wondered what had become of Galadian, the unlucky cattle farmer. A visit left her pleased to see the farm fully repaired and a new herd of cattle happy in the fields. Nice! Gorlie's little craggy little hatched safely and grew large. It tended to bring her gifts from near and far. Eventually she released it to the wild, and soared free among the rocks, hills, and peaks. <coughs> Drimdolf took up the Mandalute and convinced a few others to form a band. We could call ourselves the Mind Weavers, you know, since it's not being used anymore. No. <laughs> hey, it would work as a band name. <laughs> Bully became a fixture in Eight Cross. He could be found in the square most days, swapping outrageous stories and giving advice. Whether it was asked for or not. I see that gray in your hair. Ah, yes. When he had a chance to retire and be a fortune teller, but chose not to because he had too much to do. On his more civilized days, Drimdolf would drop to into town for gossip and tool repairs. But on the whole, he felt clear-headed only among wilder kids. Hey, Trimfold Windworks up and running again. Where I grew up, you could see the mill's sails from anywhere in the valley. He's a kind of home star. Ah, her. The old ice witch. At least we got a shield from you. And the tower. That's one story ends. Alright, and I think now we just need to pick who gets to you know, get tiered up, <laughs> right? These heroes will be added to your legacy. Quinnen, Triss, Contara, Rondon, Elsie, Gorlieb, Drindolf. Yeah, go ahead. All right, we got four heroes that we can promote. Well, Arthur is definitely going to be promoted. We need that promotion. To Bald Sun Hero. Promote him. Who else will we promote? Let's see. I think Triss could do with a promotion. She did well in the... Actually, you know what? Since we can promote any four, and we started with four, let's promote the four. We'll also promote Sa... Well... Sasha's already been promoted once. Should we promote Sasha? Or should we promote Elsie? I mean, we're gonna promote Quinn and Interest, definitely. Sasha or Elsie? I 
I like Bully. I like him a lot. I like doing his voice, but... He's not a main part of this. It would have been nice if we had two more LP. But no. Sasha or LC. You know what? LC, you are connected to this whole thing. You'll be promoted. Alright, and with that... I am going to have to end this episode here. It went a long time, but that was a hell of a climax, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> the story actually managed to remain interesting. So I'm glad we did that one. That was a good one. I believe we still have two more campaigns left. Yes, two more campaigns, and then we get to, like, the chapter kind of thing. So we will take care of those campaign, the next campaign in the next episode. But... That'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I am Chesterk44, also known as Fly. This has been a Let's Play of Wildermyth, and I shall see you all next time.